Hello everyone. Today's topic is something that's actually very near and dear to my heart because it's something that a lot of my clients actually come to me for. And this topic is how do I move? How do I exercise? How do I do things? How do I do yoga without crashing into the pain? Because every time I try to do something, I end up with more pain and I end up just being bedridden and bedbound for days or for weeks. So how to move, how to exercise, how to do yoga without crashing into the pain. So that's the topic we're going to explore today. And I dive into this a lot more inside my latest program, Becoming Resilient, which is launching in April, which is very exciting. Um, so if you're not on the wait list already, please get yourself on the wait list. I have some exciting details coming out this next two weeks, so get yourself on the wait list. Um, but back to our topic today, how do you exercise? How do you move without crashing into the pain? So there are five key questions that I guide my clients through when we're doing a one-on-one -on -one yoga session, for example, or if I'm guiding through a small group class. Does this feel safe? Number one, does this feel safe or do I feel safe doing this movement? Can I reduce my body tension? Okay. Can I calm my breath? Will I be okay later, number four? And number five, will I have the energy later to continue my day? So number four and number five, very similar, but will I be okay, meaning physically, and will I have the energy for whatever I need to do later? That's number five. So let me repeat that. The first question, and you can take notes down and just use it as a sticky note or something to keep reminding for yourself, um, is this safe? <laughs> Sorry, I blank for a moment. Is this safe? Or am I safe? Do I feel safe? Even if it's safe, it doesn't matter if you don't feel safe, right? Even if it's safe and in t intellectually, you know, like there's nothing wrong with me walking down the block, but does your body feel safe? That's the most important part because in chronic pain, it's not so much intellectually understand what we need to know but there's this more primitive wiring that's so hardwired and we actually need to tune into that part into our body and ask does our body feel safe okay if it doesn't then it's not going to work out number two can i reduce my body tension because if you're doing something and you've you realize that you're just gripping and contracting, that's probably another clue from your body that it does not feel safe, right? Contracting the muscle doesn't help with, doesn't help with anybody. Like it, it helps with strengthening things, of course, but with chronic pain, your muscles are already almost pretty much in perpetual contracted state. So we don't want more of that. So number two, like I said, can I reduce my body tension? And if you can reduce your body tension, then that's pretty much a clue as to that something's not right, it's not safe, you shouldn't continue with this. Third question to ask yourself, can I calm my breath? Again, another clue from your body as to whether it's this feels safe for you if it's okay to continue with this activity or movement. Can I calm my breath? If your breath is shallow, short, and you're holding your breath, and you're unable to draw out that long, deep breath you need to calm everything down, then that's, again, a clue from your body that this is probably too much, this movement is not safe. Okay, moving on to number four, the fourth question to ask yourself when you are exercising or doing anything, doing any errands so that you don't pay for the consequences later. Number four, will I be okay later? Will I be okay later? In the moment, you know, it might feel like this is great. I should be able to do this, but sometimes it's that afterwards it's the 30 minute or two hour even two days afterward where you start to feel the effects of what you did so this does require a little bit of trial and error for sure because when you are in a new diagnosis when you have new symptoms 
it's your body's different. It's a new body to you. So it does take a little bit of trial and error to figure out, will I be okay later? And unfortunately, there might be times where it's more error than actually hitting it right on the nail. Um, so it does take a little bit of time to know whether I will be okay later. But the first three are really good clues, right? The first three questions to ask yourself, is this safe? Can I reduce my body tension? Can I calm my breath? Those three are already pretty big clues as to whether you'll be okay later. And sometimes even though all these check out and you're still kind of feeling the fatigue, then you know that, okay, scale it back some more. So that's number four, will I be okay later? And like I said, number five, the fifth question to ask yourself to keep yourself safe without pain while you're moving and exercising, number five is, do I have the energy now? And will I have the energy later? So it kind of goes hand in hand with number four. Um, sometimes we like to push ourselves because intellectually, again, our intellectual mind and our limbic mind and as well as our body can operate on completely different levels. So we've got to communicate. Intellectually, you're like, yeah, duh, I can walk down the block, no problem. I used to be able to run a mile or run a marathon, but that's not your body now right so really check in with yourself and say do i have the energy right now to do this do i have will i have energy later to do what i need to do for the rest of the day right because i know exercising there's endorphins you feel kind of that exercise high and sometimes a lot of my clients get that high and they're like okay this is great i feel great i want to keep going but then a day or two later they realize that was a big mistake and I don't want anyone to have to go through that because it's no fun. It's it just, it's unpleasant. So really monitoring that very closely. It's like you have to really watch everything with very, very detailed eye uh, and detailed sensation. And even if it means you have to stop whatever you're doing, um, let's just take an exercise, for example, like I'm a yoga therapist, so I always, pause uh, with my clients or in the class after we do a pose or we do a movement and I say okay let's stand or let's sit whatever we were doing and check in and see if you feel all right if you feel like it's it's too much or if it's just right or if you're just tuned into those little clues that your body is telling you um Yes, Shade 5, I don't know your name, but just, Shade 5, she, you said so true, sometimes you just keep pushing yourself and then you get totally fatigued. I, I totally understand and it. I know it's so hard. It's so hard because you have this idea of what you should be able to do versus what you can actually do and that, that gap can be really hard to, to come to acceptance to, right? But we can fill that gap. We can fill where you are now to where you want to be. It's just gonna take a little bit more time and your timeline is going to be very different from other people's timeline, even other people with chronic pain and chronic illness, let alone people who are able-bodied, right? So you gotta operate on your timeline for that so that you don't just crash and burn. Because if you do something and you crash and burn, you completely get fatigued, you're more afraid of doing that, right? You're more afraid of doing the things that could actually be good to you, you just need to approach it differently. So to recap again, those five questions to ask yourself when you are exercising, when you're doing yoga, when you're doing anything really, is this safe? Can I reduce my body tension? Can I calm my breath? Will I be okay later? And will my will I have energy later for whatever else I need to do? So these are my five guiding questions to help you find the right boundaries and safety to exercise, to move, to do what you wanna do um, and build the stamina to do, okay? And this actually goes very well in line with my daily pain care plan that I have up on my website. It's on elaineyoga.com slash blog hyphen articles. You're welcome, Shade5. 
Um, you can download your daily pain care plan and it's under this, it's this under umbrella of the third part, which is to challenge yourself. So just really quick, the three part of the daily pain care plan is taking breaks, doing things that calm you down. And then um, the third part, which kind of ties into our topic today is to challenge yourself. Um, which is tricky, like I said, because it's really easy to go overboard. And uh, but that's not to say you can't you sh or you shouldn't push along your body, push along the edge a little bit. You just need to know where your boundaries are, and work within and right up to the edge of that boundary to slowly increase the boundaries, slowly increase the threshold of your stamina, of your strength, and your mobility. Okay, so um, I have some more videos and some more information up on my blog there in laneyoga.com slash blog hyphen articles. Um, go ahead and check that out. And let me know if you have questions, you can DM me here or just send me an email at elaineyogatherapy at gmail.com. And all of this that I'm teaching um, through these videos and through these little live videos I'm sharing, will be inside my new program, Becoming Resilient. So it's a six week pain care yoga and a coaching program that starts in April. I am very excited because it's the first time I'm launching something like this. I'm bringing all the strategies and all the techniques I've worked with hundreds of clients, private clients over the last five, almost six years now of working with chronic pain and bring that into a neatly packaged format to help you create a life of resilience, to rise above your, your symptoms and feel help you feel more like yourself again. Um, and it's small group, so it really is, it's nice. You're, you're in the community, but you're not in so many, in such a large community that you feel overwhelmed. And I try to, I purposely intentionally keep it small so that everyone feels like they get a one-on-one -on -one attention. So there'll be yoga therapy practices ranging from 10 to 30 minutes of all levels. And then we'll have weekly coaching as well to check in, to get your questions answered and learn a little bit more about lifestyle strategies like these ones to help you be able to um, become more resilient, to become, be able to to really rise above. So check that out, elaineyoga.com slash resilience. That's the wait list. And I'll have some more details coming soon about that program. And thank you so much everyone for joining. And next week I'm coming to you with a, a practice actually, a small short yoga practice. So hopefully you can join as well on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time. All right, everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.